So uh, yeah, you see here the switchboard and the user would transition from left to the right. So coming from something like the VLO or the virtual connection registry, uh, something, yeah, right. So I call that resource provider here and goes to the switchboard and then hopefully eventually leaves the switchboard uh, again um, to some tool to, to do something with, uh, with the resource. So I'm going to talk about the left side of the picture. So the, the connection on the left hand side and then Emmanuel is going to take over. And, talk about the right hand side and basically we're both going to tell how to connect your servers or tool to the to the switchboard um, so yeah that is this part of the presentation let me reset my timer I'll try to do it in about well, five five minutes or so this uh, is actually quite easy so uh, it shouldn't take that much time so I already explained this is the left hand side so there will be some identifiable uh, resource coming out of a catalog or a repository or some, some other resource provider. Uh, and that's to be sent to the switchboard. Um, the, the spoiler is on the bottom of the slide. That's all you have to do. Make sure that the URL like that is generated. Um, I'm going to move on and you will see that uh, broken down uh, very soon. I wanted to start by giving quick uh, overview of some examples of integrations that already exist so that you have an idea of what we are talking about in case it's not clear yet. So this is a screenshot from the VLO. So on the record page of the VLO, uh, it uh, will uh, very often show a uh, resource. Uh, and then there is, uh, oh, yeah, there is a little uh, drop down menu on that resource. You can click it. You get a menu here and then you have the option process with language resource switchboard. So um, what I will show in a minute is uh, basically uh, what the VLO does to make this work with the switchboard. Here's another example. This is the virtual collection registry looking at a specific uh, virtual collection. Uh, here uh, there are the resources that make up the virtual collection. Again, there is a very similar looking uh, button over there. Click it and you get the option to process that resource with the uh, switchboard. Final example I uh, thought I would show, this is uh, B2Drop, which is a U. Uh, kind of cloud drive solution, um, also part of uh, EOS Cup. Um, again, here's a drop-down menu, and there are some more options there. Uh, some of you will recognize from, from uh, on cloud, next cloud, uh, and for B2 drop, they've added the option to go to the switchboard with that specific resource. So, how does that work? So, basically, um, what uh, the, the software should do is make the uh, browser do this request to the switchboard, switchboard uh, URL, uh, and a couple of components need to be set, uh, sent as uh, path parameters. I just, yeah. Uh, so here's an example uh, coming from the VLO. So we have these uh, four components, some uh, name or identifier of the application, then the URI of the resource, uh, media type of the resource and uh, language code. Actually, the first two are mandatory and the latter two can also be omitted. Uh, if you don't know them, you don't have that information reliably, then the switchboard uh, has, uh, uh, capacity of, of uh, detecting that information, or at least trying to detect it. And very important uh, technical detail here, obviously URL encode all these uh, path parameters, because there's going to be slashes in your uh, media type, going to be slashes in the URI. So obviously those need to be uh, URL encoded. Um, right, so if you would decode that, uh, you would basically get these parameters out of the request. Very uh, straightforward. And that's all the switchboard needs to, uh, to work with the resource. So just uh, to kind of get a, an idea of what's going on behind the scenes, here's some code from the switchboard. So you can see here, actually, I, I won't explain all the code, but it's pretty straightforward. It just gets these things from the path. It's as easy as that. Um, but you won't have to code uh, for the switchboard. You will have to code on, on your side coming uh, into the switchboard. So here's an example from the VLO. So there is a method here, VLO, that uh, determines the, the switchboard URL for a given uh, resource. 
So this is all forming out of the, the database of the, of the VLO. Uh, so let's look at this bit of code in a little bit more detail. So what is done is just a string is uh, generated, a URL, that, that's going to be the URL, going to be the, the href of the, of the hyperlink. Um, so there are four dynamic components in here for those, you know, Java. Uh, we'll recognize that from the string of formats. Um, so there is the URL, obviously, of the switchboard, which I would always recommend to make configurable in your application. Um, so here we are constructing already the URL down there. Uh, then there is the, the href, the most important thing, the uh, URI. So it can be URL or handle or DOI maybe at some point or already of your um, of the resource that uh, you want to uh, send to the switchboard, uh, URL encoded, and same for MIME type. And finally, you add, if you have it, the language code VLO, um, takes all of this from the CMDI metadata, but it might come from some other source depending on your application. Um, yeah, and there you have it, the URL. So, in summary, it's as easy as this. You, you will uh, generate some um, URL like this and um, put it in a hyperlink and uh, let the user click on that. Um, if I can spend one minute, so that's the technical side. If I can spend uh, one final minute on talking about um, you know, how to implement this actually in your application, some things to, uh, to consider. So the switchboard at this point uh, works with individual files. So it connects individual files with tools. And by file, I, I mean actual bitstream that you can say it's, it, it has this uh, size and it has this media type. So um, you, uh, I will share slides later, by the way. Um, it, there's not much point in making, putting a switchboard uh, uh, button uh, on, on a collection level or for a landing page on the HTML. Uh, or some general service endpoint that requires interaction. All of these things are not supported by the switchboard at this point, so I would also not uh, put the integration there because you will be setting uh, false expectations uh, to the end user. Uh, what you can do is look at the switchboard uh, tool registry. Uh, there's the metadata of all the integrated tools there, and it will uh, you, you will find there. I mean, it's it's some uh, JSON definitions. If I'm not mistaken, you will find the, the MIME types that are supported by the, by the tools. So that gives you kind of a, an idea of what is and is not supported at, at this point. Um, and um, yeah, where to, where to put this, uh, of course, also depends on uh, uh, how well you know your, uh, your content. So um, for example, on the VLO, it's not always, uh, it's, it's an aggregation. So uh, there maybe the error rate is a little bit higher, but if it's your own repository and you know your content very well, you can probably make better informed decisions on where to exactly uh, put this integration. Um, yeah, that's what I have for, uh, for this uh, part. So I will uh, stop sharing my screen.